If you're interested in physics and consciousness, keep watching. Consciousness, physics. Somehow the scientists haven't been able to get those things to merge together and sync. And part of the reason why is <laughs> in all their uh, formulas, mathematical formulas and stuff that they come up with, they don't incorporate anything to do with consciousness into their formula. Even though on a daily basis, the con people, you know, like everything in this universe you're, is observed through consciousness. Even the scientists doing the tests, but, so, but they don't put any consciousness equations into their equations or consciousness. Anyways, so before we go ahead, let me just clarify two things. You need to notice a speed and mass. Those are two things before, before I get started, just so to uh, clarify, so no one's lost because this program is all about uh, explaining, um, you know, weird stuff, but low level. We're going to talk in layman's terms, consciousness and physics. Okay. First of all, speed. The th first thing you have to know about speed is uh, you can never measure speed by yourself. If you're floating in space by yourself and there's nothing else in the universe, there's no other planets, no sun, no nothing. It's just you, you're floating in space. Of course you can't breathe in space, but just as a thought experiment, you're floating in space by yourself. You can never know how fast you're going ever because you speed is measured against something else, against another object. It has a relation. Speed has a relation to other things. That's how you measure speed. So if you were floating in space, let's say you had a suitcase or a briefcase, you're floating in space and you take your briefcase and you throw it away from you. Now that's briefcase might be going away from you, traveling away from you in space for at 20 miles an hour, or you might be going away from that suitcase, 20 miles an hour. You'll never know. You can't know if you have two things, only two things, then you never know who's moving. You don't know if the suitcase is moving away from you, or you don't know if you are moving away from your suitcase. You can't figure that out. That's we haven't be, been able to do that uh, so far in science. So that's a very strange thing. Now here on earth speed, it's always in relation to the earth. The connection is the earth. That's the other object that we're calculating from. So if you're going hundred kilometers an hour on the highway or 60 miles an hour on the highway, that's based on the planet on earth in relation to the earth, you're going uh, hundred kilometers an hour or whatever, 60 miles an hour. So you might be going seven, uh, you know, 60 miles an hour on the planet, but the planet two is going around the sun, right? So it's going, I don't know how fast it's going. I think it's like 12,000 miles an hour. Don't quote me. I used to know it. I don't, I don't know it by heart. So the earth is also traveling. So now you're not going hundred kilometers an hour. You're actually traveling 12,100 kilometers an hour, but the, 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 the sun is moving too in relation to the center of the galaxy and the galaxy is moving. So they're all moving. So we will never, ever know what the true speed is ever because there's no center point of the universe. There's no anchor point where we're going to say, okay, all measurement is based from this doesn't exist. So we can never, and will never know. And we'll never be able to know how fast we are truly moving the true speed because it's only in relation to other objects. Okay. So now you understand more, hopefully of speed, what speed is, how it's measured. The other thing is mass. So it's kind of like weight, but it's not the exact same thing as weight. <clears throat> On on this planet, I might weigh my weight. I might weigh 200 pounds, but on the moon, 
I'll weigh less. I don't know, 140? I'm not sure. I'll weigh less. 30% less, something like that. I think. But my mass is still the same. So even though there was nothing changed about me, the mass is still the same. But I'll weigh differently on the moon than on the planet. That's mass. So we clarified what speed is. And we clarified what, ma what mass is. Weight in quotes. But anyways... Uh, so now I can go ahead. Now let, let's let's get on with this program. I said I was going to talk about consciousness and physics. All right. So there are three things I'm going to get into about physics, which scientists have been able to prove now for over a hundred years. They've been running experiments over and over, and they verify and confirm that this is true. What I'm about to say. <clears throat> of course, don't believe me outright. What I say, you know, if you. Do your own research. That's the absolute best. Don't ever take one person's word for it. In any case, uh, these three things. So first of all is if you, were in, if you were to go in a special spaceship that can go really fast, okay, and it's traveling around the sun in our, in our solar system, it's traveling around the sun. And we have on Earth a special telescope that can measure mass. On Earth, we can measure the mass of that spaceship you're in and we could see you. Actually, we could even see inside the spaceship. So we could see from the outside of the spaceship and we could see inside of the spaceship. And we could measure your mass with this special telescope. So you're traveling around the solar system. What we're going to notice and this has been proven over and over and over again. This is, this is the thing. It's very strange, but it's true. The faster and faster you travel, your mass will increase. We're going to notice by measuring you from that special telescope. Oh, his mass is increasing more and more and more. He's getting closer to the speed of light. Look at his mass. It's now four times heavier, five, hundred times heavier, and so on. A thousand times heavier. Also, we're going to notice that the spaceship is going to start to get blurred and stretched. So let's say the spaceship is going this way. It'll actually at one point look like it's double the length, triple the length, four times the length, five times the length, a hundred times the length. It's going to get stretched out. And also, if we were able to look at your watch that you're wearing inside the spaceship, we notice that the seconds are clicking slower. You know? On Earth, it would be like click, 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 click. On the spaceship, if we were, if we were able to watch your second hand on your cl on your <laughs> clock on your watch on your watch, it would be like click, click, click. So we say time is going slower for that person. So scientists say and been able to prove this: the faster you travel. Faster you get closer to the speed of light, your mass increases, which is kind of like weight, but we, I showed you the difference. So your mass increases, your time slows down, and you seem to stretch out visually when we look at you. All right, so those three things are true, but here's the little surprise, and I love this part. And this too, scientists have been able to do experiments over and over and over. And what happens on the spaceship, you see, and this is very important, this part. What happens in a spaceship is your experience on that spaceship, as you go faster and faster and faster to the speed of light, right? If you go on a scale and you want to see how much you weigh, if that was possible, and you, let's say, 200 pounds, uh, as the example. Okay, you're going to travel faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. You're getting closer and closer to the speed of light. You're going to go on that scale and it's going to seem normal to you. It's 200 pounds. It's always 200 pounds. So you won't notice that you're getting... You won't notice the person that's traveling, in, case, in this case you, going on that special spaceship, you're not going to notice anything. You're not going to notice that I'm heavier now. I got more mass. You're not going to notice that. You're not going to notice anything. 
You're gonna look at your clock and your clock is ticking normally. Uh, you're gonna look at your watch and your watch is ticking normally. Click, click, click. And you're gonna look around the spaceship and your spaceship is still the same size. It's not getting, it's not getting stretched out. However, if you look outside your spaceship and you're traveling really, really fast, you're gonna notice that the planets are getting stretched out. Let's say planet Earth. You can try, you're trying to look at planet Earth. It's, when you go whizzing by it, when you whiz by it, it's like stretched out. So scientists ha are baffled at this. They are like <coughs> scratching their head. They have no idea why it's doing this. Well, I told you this program was going to be about physics and consciousness. Let's, let's get to it. I'm going to say something. I never heard this. Uh, I never heard it explained this way. Uh, but I know why. Well, based on my research, based on my research, I formed a conclusion of why this is happening. Why is it that when we measure externally something that's moving fast in relation to us, why does time slow down for it? Why does the mass increase and why does it get stretched out? And when you're on the spaceship, everything is normal. Seconds are normal, your time is normal, your mass is normal, and you don't get stretched out. My answer to that is this. It's because the universe was designed so that no matter where you are in the universe, or how fast you're traveling, life can happen. Consciousness can have an experience. That's how the universe is designed. The universe is designed so that no matter how fast you're going, or no matter where you are, how fast you're going, because remember, we never could never really know the true speed of what you're really doing. So no matter where you are in the universe, no matter how fast you're traveling, consciousness can happen. Consciousness can have an experience. That's why when you're on the spaceship, everything is normal. For us outsiders looking at it, it's fucked up. But for the person inside the spaceship looking out, everything is fucked up. Unless it's traveling at the same speed. So that is my, you know, um, conclusion from the stuff I've been researching, which is near-death experience, quantum physics, um, uh, alien abductions, you know, stuff like that. There's a correlation, there's a connection. And scientists are the majority of them, not all of them, but the majority of them, they're, they are, it's, they're called, it's called, they're materialists. Not materialists like materialists, you know, money. Materialists in that uh, only f physical objects exist in this universe. There's nothing else. It's only physical objects exist. This camera, this body. Those are the only things that exist. So in other words, whatever you could, Whatever you could see around you, hear, sense, or I should say, anything that you could taste, smell, see, hear, or touch, those are the only things that are real. There's nothing else. They use this mindset to do science. And that's why they can't figure out the universe, because you have to put consciousness into the equation. You have to. It's like... That expression, that old expression, um, if a tree falls in the forest, does, any, does it still make sound? But the truth is, if no, you know, if no one's there, there's not even a forest. That's what, that's what the truth is. <laughs> if no one's there, there's, the forest, there's not even a forest for a tree to fall in. So consciousness affects scientific experiments a lot not just what i just said there what i just said 
and a lot of other stuff too, which, I'm, which we're going to get into on this channel eventually. We're going to get into that. So that is my explanation of why when you're traveling on that spaceship, you don't get affected. It's a normal life for you. Everything's normal. You could live your normal life. You could do stuff. So let's say change that, change that, let's say spaceship, change that spaceship into a, a solar system with a planet going around it. And it's going, it's going as fast as that spaceship, which we, in my example, which you observe where time's slowing down, it's getting, okay? Let's say that spaceship now is a, is, a, is a sun and there's a planet going around it. It's going that fast. Well, you on that planet, you're going to have a normal life. You, your experience. Someone watching in from, from an outside that's not going as fast as you are, somebody that's not traveling as fast as you are, watching from the outside, they're going to see weird. It's going to be weird. But you on that planet traveling that fast, everything's normal to you. You could walk around, you weigh 200 pounds, you could walk around, everything's cool. You could have a life, you could have experience because the universe is, I mean, it's clear to me, the universe is designed specifically for consciousness. It's designed specifically to have, that's the main purpose of this universe. So consciousness can have an experience. And I hope my example there with those, the three things, when you're in a spaceship, the speed, mass and well the the stretching I, I, I don't know how to call that there's a distortion maybe speed distortion I don't, I don't know if that's the right term that's why that exists and scientists like uh... hope you liked my explanation like share and subscribe if you like this kind of stuff because I've got a lot more coming up and that's it for today Hope you liked the episode. See you next time on Raise Your Frequency.